what we started off with on Friday. Now here, as you can see, we are analyzing our linear equations. So what analyzing is linear equations here. Uh, that first one, letter A, we want to analyze those different characteristics. For that first one, y equals negative three x plus three, tell us the three main things. Those three main things are never ever going to leave us. What's the slope, the y-intercept, the x-intercept? And we're going to do the same thing on the next one. Tell us those three major things. Okay. Now, on that y equals negative three x plus three, you should then be able to tell me two things right off the bat. You should not even have to think about it, just to tell me two quick things. The slope and one of those intercepts are the two quick things. The structure of that equation should look very familiar. And that's what we've been doing since sixth grade. This is that y equals mx or ax plus b, right? So off that, somebody, what is my uh, slope? I mean, yeah, I mean, that is the slope. That's that ax there. And what is that slope going to then also answer for us? That's telling us what the graph is doing. We don't need to do our calculator. The graph is telling us what's going on here. Okay? So this answers this question here. And Krista, you said a second ago, the graph is decreasing because, oh, it's negative, right? Okay, that's immediate. The slope is there. Now, the other thing that we immediately have is what intercept? The x intercept or the y intercept? Correct. We are always able to just look at that and say, hey, we have the y intercept. That's the slope and the y intercept. So let's one more time say, hey, this is our slope, and not just any old y intercept, or x intercept. It's the y intercept. That is correct. Now, in this instance, as you said, three, we like to write these as points, as ordered pairs, I should say. Zero comma three. So try to get into that habit, okay? The one thing you don't know, and you can't just look at it and say, hey, it's two, it's five, it's the x-intercept. So if you were here Friday, cool, let's do that. Work, and this brings in all of our equation skills we've been working on. To find that x-intercept, we said last week, guys, that x-intercept crosses the x-axis at something comma zero. So when I had brought up Desmos last week, and I graphed the line, and had you guys rattle off where the uh, x-intercept was, you said two comma zero, and then I moved it, and then you said something like, or comma zero. The x-intercepts always happening at something comma zero. Now here in that problem we have to then set y to zero. So do it. We're going to take our equation, put y is zero, and we're right back to what we've been working on the last week, solving our equation skills. Yesterday when we were online, this was our equation skills. Ultimate decided on everything we've been doing, equation skills. You should be able to look at that and solve it out immediately without even thinking. If you have two numbers up there, you gotta move. Okay? We're not moving that x. That x is good. Okay? We want to move that x. Sorry, we don't want to move that x. That x is fine. Okay? Don't move that x. That's the wrong button. Okay? Alright? We want to keep that x right there. What are we going to move first, somebody? The three. Just the three, right? So we will move just the three. So in this instance, we're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, do what with that? How are we going to move the three? Subtract it, right. Subtract that three. Okay, and as we subtract that three, put my line down the middle. Zero minus three. Negative 3x comes on down, cool. 
And as we keep talking to you, I think for most of us, it's finally clicked. We got to divide. We're not adding it. We got to divide it. <laughs> and as we divide it, this is where you're using those calculators. Don't get lazy as well. When you type it into your calculator, negative 3 divided by negative 3, don't forget those negatives. Yeah, it should be a 1. If you don't use those negatives <coughs> consistently, your calculator might spit out a negative 1. Just because you're being lazy or whatever. <coughs> so, x is 1. What that tells me is this graph, y equals negative 3x plus 3, this equation has an x intercept of 1, 0. All right, if I graph this dude, this is going to go through the x axis at 1, 0. Okay? Let's do the next one. Does letter B look exactly like letter A? Sure does not. So, what we want to do on letter B here is parentheses says as we have to distribute do it okay do what she said she said distribute because you have parentheses we try to again talk to you guys enough that when we have parentheses we put the following okay go ahead and distribute so do that as she said distribute go 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 that's all we do we do the distribution 4x minus 4. Does it look exactly the same yet? Uh, almost, not quite. How can we make that look like that? It's that mm, not the 4. It's that y and that y minus 12. That y minus 12 is close, but not quite, is it? If I could get that 12 out of there, right? Kayla? Andrew helped you out there. He said, what? Add the 12, right? If you could get the 12 out of there, would the y be by itself now? Right? So y would be by itself. So what's the inverse of a, a minus 12? Plus 12, right? Add it to the other side. And when I add it to the other side, what am I going to put that 12 underneath? The 4x or the 4? Cool. We're, we're good. And when you do that, just like we've solved any other equation, the 12s cancel, the 4x drops down, and it's a good place for your calculator. Negative 4 plus 12. Put it in your head, check if your calculator equals 8. Plus 8. Now, this is something that is super familiar. This is something we just started off with on the first one. This is something we've been doing since sixth grade. What's the slope? What's the y-intercept? Slope is what? Four. four. And what does that slope of four imply? My graph is doing what? Three. And then the y-intercept, as you said, is eight. Because we had that four x plus eight, we are good to go there. The only thing we can never do, which sucks, is to say the x-intercept just by looking at it. You will always have to do that skill right here. You will always need to do a solving skill. You will always need to put y is 0 and do your equation skills. You guys leave us for geometry and you roll into geometry next year, your equation skills are not going to leave you. Because again, when you look at this one, you should be able to tell me what to do first. The 4 and the 8, how to move the 4 and the 8. Minus 8. Minus 8. <laughs> and then how to get rid of that 4. So minus that 8. Minus that 8. Okay. So minus that 8. We got negative 8, and then divide by 4. Somebody? Negative 8 divided by 4. Negative 2. So the x-intercept 
is at negative 2. The graph crosses the x-axis at negative 2. Okay? Can you do that for us? You'd be good. Okay? Now, on that last one, last one doesn't have us analyzing everything. The last one just says put it into that ax plus b form, that general form. So, when they say put into y equals ax plus b, we want to put it in, rearrange it to make it sure it's y by itself. So, let's go and do that. Okay? So, where is that right now? That's ugly. We want to get it into making sure it looks again like this. Let's put that at the top. Okay? Let's put that at the top so we know that's what we want to try to get to. Can we get y by itself? Can we get y equals ax plus b? We definitely can, Andrew. Can we get y there by itself? So when we see that y on the left hand side, we see a couple things going on with that y. There's a 2 there and there's a negative 2x there. We got to take everything else to the other side. And just like we've been doing with our equation skills, the order does kind of matter. What are we going to move first? The 2 or the negative 2x? Two Matt? Negative 2x? Two I would agree with you. Hold on to that 2. Just like we've said on everything else, move any addition or subtraction first. And then get rid of any multiplication or division next. So as Matt suggested, the negative 2x. And what's the inverse of a minus 2x? Add 2x. Okay, add 2x to both sides. Nothing is changing from what we've been doing or our equation skills. Now, it's going to look a little odd on the next side because when we add 2x to both sides, well, what we have here then is on the left, those cancel. On the left, they cancel. Cool. And you're left with the 2y. We've seen that before. But on the right, these are not the same thing. They're not like terms, so don't combine them. Don't say like a 4, x, or anything like that. Remember what your goal is. Your goal is ax plus b. Your goal is ax plus b. So I'm going to leave it as 2x minus 6 ax plus b, 2x minus 6. Okay, Matt did us off on the right step there. Cool. y is almost by itself. Not yet. Matt, how are we going to finish that 2? We have to <laughs> divide it. the 2. Yes. So how are we going to divide What's that? How you get 2x minus 6? So we <laughs> added 2x to both sides, right, Krista? There's a negative 2x, so we added 2x, right? Now, are negative 6 and 2x, are those considered to be like terms? No. So I can't add them together. i got to keep them separate. Yep. Okay. Now, Matt said to divide, right? Yeah. So when I get ready to divide here, because it's multiplication, I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide everything by 2. Everything gets divided by 2. Everything's been doubled. i got to divide everything by 2. Now, divide it. 2 divided by 2. Yep. 2 divided by 2 is 1x. And what's negative 6 divided by 2? Yep. Division negative there. 3. Division, Krista. Yep, negative 3. Okay, y equals negative x minus 3. That's the first time we've done that. We're going to do some more work with that here today and tomorrow. With that skill of rearranging that, we're going to keep working on that too. Okay? So let's keep with that. Let's get our books out. And let's turn to page right here. 261. 261. Six two sixty one.
Intercept and the y intercept. All right, let's go and do this. Now, fortunately, we cannot identify the slope like that because it's not y equals ax plus b, that sucks. So that, we can't do that yet. The other two things, the y intercept and the x intercept, are on the same side. Their x and y's are on the same side, that's definitely true. And with those two things, well, we can go through and find those out relatively easily. Um, the x-intercept, we said, it doesn't matter which form you're in. The x-intercept, we've been telling you, you got to go through and, and do some equations with the find. Let's go find the x-intercept first, just like we did in our, home, or our form up there. To find the x-intercept, we said replace y as 0, solve for x. So let's do that. To find the x-intercept, we're going to replace, wherever you see y, replace y as 0, and we're going to solve for x. That's it. That's what you got to keep in mind. Because this x-intercept is something comma 0. I don't know what that, comma, that something is yet, but I know it's something comma 0. This is going to sit on the x-axis. Across the x axis at something zero. Okay, let's go use our equations for this now. Uh, it's zero for y. What's two times zero, everybody? And doesn't zero just drop out now? Two times zero is just zero, right? And doesn't zero just drop out? Two times zero is zero, and zero just drops out. So all of a sudden, I end up with a pretty easy equation. 3x equals 8. How do you get rid of the 3? Divide by 3. Divide by 3. Okay. Divide by 3. It's multiplication. The inverse multiplication is division. Divide by 3. Can you take 8 divided by 3 nicely? No. No. When you try to take 8 divided by 3, you, yeah. Yep, you do not get a, uh, you do not get yourself a pretty number. So as we keep talking and talking and talking, leave that as a fraction. And again, eight divided by three. Math, leave it as a fraction, eight thirds. All right. So we just found what we say is the x-intercept. We're done for the x-intercept. It's going to cross it at right between two and three. Where eight thirds is located. Caleb? Okay. 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 Give me some minute there. Now, the y intercept. We're going to do the same thing for the y intercept. The difference is for the y intercept, the y intercept is 0, comma something. So go replace x as 0. Okay? Go replace x as 0. Back to your equations. Replace x as 0. You're going to have 3 times 0. What's 3 times 0? So doesn't that just drop out and you're left with a negative 2y equals 8? Two. Two. Okay. So to find the y-intercept, we do the same flipping thing, but replace x as 0. Bless you. And when we do that now, correct. We divide by negative 2, as Andrew rattled off. And y equals negative 4. 
And unfortunately, that's not going to happen here. It would be nice if that made our, that life easy, Krista. Unfortunately, it does not. So the y-intercept is negative 4. That's great. Now, the last thing we cannot, or we have not found yet is the slope. And Krista said the slope she suggested was 3, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, that would be great. The only time we can say that the slope was 3 is if it's in our form y, at, y equals ax plus b. Is it in that form? That form and that form are not the same thing. That sucks. So what we have to now finish it off by doing here is taking this, making it look like that. So let's do that last one here. We have to rearrange that so that they do look the same. So just like we did a few minutes ago in our warm-up, I'm going to line up these equal signs, line down the middle. This is the second way we've done now. Remember, our goal is to get y equals. Look at that y. Move everything else to the other side besides the y. You got to move the 2 and the 3 to the x. Again, the order does kind of matter. So, what are we going to move first? The 2 or the 3x? The 3x. You're going to hold off on that multiplication to the end, like we've been doing on everything. We're going to move that 3x first. Now, how do you move the 3x? Addition or subtraction? Because it's, it's positive, right? Yep. The inverse of positive is negative. Subtracted. Cool. Show that to me, just like we did on the warm up a few minutes ago. Do it to the left, do it to the right to keep it balanced. Now when we do that, negative 2y comes on down now, and these are not like terms. Don't tell me like a 5x or anything like that. Those are not likes. They're not going to combine. They're going to stay separate. Remember, what's my end goal? ax plus b. Negative 3x plus 8. Keep those things separated. They are not like terms. All right. Now, y is almost by itself. How am I getting rid of that negative 2? It's the same question you asked a few minutes ago, Chris, on the other one. I subtracted 3x. Okay, those are not like terms. Okay, how am I getting rid of that negative 2? Matt? Everything's getting divided by negative 2. Right. And when I divide everything by negative 2, divide what you can. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 cancels. There's your y. Okay. Negative 3 divided by negative 2. That's going to give you a positive 1.5. Leave it as a fraction, though. 3 over 2. We have all know how to use our calculators. 3 over 2x. And 8 divided by negative 2? Negative 4. That is our form that tells me now the slope. Our slope is then what? Three halves. Three halves. Our equation's never going to tell that to us at the very beginning. We did. Three halves. And what does the three halves imply? The line is increasing, decreasing, or constant because it's positive. Max, put you in the line. Okay? So, three halves is what we got. Alrighty? Alright.
do one more thing here. Okay, and the one more thing we're going to do, take a look here, make a couple pages we're going to talk about. Yep. Uh, 266. 266. 266. 266. Okay. 266. Okay. On the last one, we're going to take a look here. Let's take a minute. Let's read through question one there. The unfortunate part about this last one here is yes, there's a little bridging to do. And the next thing is it brings in the geometry. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I know. I got to see the other one. I can't do that. That's the end of the one. Here we go. 266. So, on here, well, it's a good thing it's not trying. All right. On this problem here, we are uh, manufacturing new boxes, all right? And in this box, it has to have a specific volume and a specific base area. So let's think about having a new box and a new specific base area. So again, volume, as I've talked about in my geometry classes, or as we talked about, volume is something you start working on in about fifth and sixth grade. Volume is the space that you guys are occupying right now, sitting there. Okay? Volume is three dimensional. So we have ourselves a box, a cereal box, or in this case, a calculator box. Volume is this three dimensional space. Okay? The base area, that is what we're talking about right here. That's the shape of the base, the base area. What shape? Okay? I don't know what you're talking about. So about you don't have the shape of the box. Oh. I need a gap of space. So, all we're talking about here is we got volume. Volume is, again, it's three-dimensional space. And then the base area is just the shape of the base. It's the shape of my base. The rectangle, right? So, we have to have a specific base area, a specific rectangle for the box or the space and then a specific eventually height for the volume. If we increase the height, what happens then to the volume? Or the, the volume increases, right? That's it. So in this particular problem, okay, it says we did not specify a height for the boxes. So it could be this tall or it could be this tall or it could be that tall. We don't know. We didn't specify a height for the volume. Okay. Says we want to write a literal so equation. Find the volume? Just give me a minute. We haven't got there yet. Oh. To calculate the volume of a box and write the volume formula to solve for the height. So here's the problem. Your guys' geometry skills, as some of you pointed out, aren't uh, quite up to par. So the volume formula is right here. The volume for that box that we're working with is this right here. Volume, V for volume, is length times width times height. That's where our L, W, and H are represented. Length times width times height. Yeah, we're also doing basic all what kind of makes sense? Now, it says to rewrite the formula to solve for our height. So we want to rewrite this formula to solve for h, to solve for the height. So we want to use our equation skills to rearrange this thing. To, put the v to the solve, h. to get h by itself. Okay? Oh, no. We want to get h by itself. So to get h by itself, all right, how are we going to do that? <laughs> we want to, okay, great, no numbers. Cool. So we want to get L and W to the other side. 
How are L and W attached to H? What operation is in between all this? What's the inverse of multiplication? The division. We are going to divide. That's it. Who cares if there's numbers there or not? You're still asking yourself the same questions. We're not dividing by H. H is staying put. We're dividing by L, L, and, w. L and W. Because we are solving for the height for H. So we're, we're solving for H. We're getting rid of L and W to the other side. Now, when you divide something by itself, it cancels. It cancels. And when we did that, what are you left with on the right-hand side? H. H is now by itself. Do we have H to solve for? We do. Now, on the left-hand side, can anything cancel? No. no. You are going to find out you're going to get some weird looking answers here. You're going to get answers where you're going to have V over L times W. That's it. That's the answer. You're not going to get an answer that is uh, X equals 3, X equals negative 10, X equals 8 over 3. So how do we do that part? Hold on. That's all we can do on that one is say H equals V over L W. We don't do a ton of work with this. In the math class, we do more work than in your science classes. You guys, I know for chemistry, and <clears throat> chemistry usually next year is sophomore. That's where you're going to start using a lot more. We're laying groundwork there for you. Okay? So, the last one, letter B, does it for us. We now set the volume to be 450. So the height is the volume divided by the length and the width. What is the volume that they're setting? 450. The area of the base is 75 square inches. Okay. So, the length and the width. Anybody can remind me? How do you find the area of a rectangle? What's that? What's that? You multiply the length and the width. Thank you, Chris. You multiply the length and the width. So the length times the width, which is the shape of my face, they told us. Length times the width. So the length times the width here is the uh, 75 right there. So. The H is going to be whatever 450 is divided by 75. That's going to give me that specific height. That's 450 divided by 75. Six. And we are in inches. So as Krista said, the length times the width, that's the area of the space, the rectangle. And then we're going to find the height such that we get this height of this box to be specifically 450. Six inches. Now this looks like it might be about six inches right here, folks. Okay? All right? Now, what's that? Okay? But we're going to say that this is going to be roughly about 450. If we increase this by a few more, it increases the body. This is maybe about a foot. Okay? Few more, it increases that volume. All right. Okay. All righty. We're gonna pause it there because the next one is the volume of a cone, which I'm sure we don't know the volume of a cone. All right. So if you did not complete the delta math from yesterday, right, you need to get that Chromebook out and complete. Right, let's see where the delta math. And then from here, those math. And then for a couple of you that need to finish up that quiz, any quiz from uh, Friday, I'll get to here in just a moment. Our graphs of Friday, what was that any quiz? I'll get to here in just a moment. Um, Jayla, next up tonight. Are you on Friday?
Okay. 